want to share my testimony with you guys of how Jesus saved my life out of the cult and the New Age movement. My parents, my dad's Buddhist and my, my mom's agnostic pretty much. And um, so I kind of was raised in this environment that was, you know, they did tell me their Buddhist values and the Buddhist religion, but they didn't force me to choose a religion. And I just believed in a general God um, being. I didn't really have a religion when I was growing up basically, but I just believed in God and I tried to be morally good. Um, so when I became a teenager, I started to struggle with depression. I would feel really lethargic for some reason. Um, and periods of depression would happen in my life here and there, some worse, some not as, you know, not as bad. And when I was in college, I, my boyfriend was Christian at that time. So that was the first time that I truly started going to church more and I learned about Christianity. Um, yeah, and I, w I went to church for two years. Um, but, but although although I did understand like the basics of Christianity, I never understood Jesus. So this whole time I believed in God, revered all these, I guess, different religions and um, was very open to the idea of Christianity. Um, and although I asked a lot of questions about who Jesus was, I felt like I never got the answer that I could make could make sense of who Jesus was. And um, after those two years in college, I actually became kind of jaded and anti-Christian because some of the things that happened at church and the way that church made me feel. So I kind of, um, I would say, departed from God, um, no longer really tried to be as morally ethical as I used to be. I used to really be suspicious of things like, um, you know, like sex and drugs and things like that. But after my experience in, in the Christian church, I really became, um, I would say, I just didn't really believe in those things anymore. Um, yeah, and I didn't take to heart those like rules that people were, you know, drawing about what you should and what you shouldn't do. And um, so there was like a, you know, two years, my first two years in college, I was, I was going to church. And then the last two years of college, I kind of departed from God, um, like ethically, but I was still seeking God in my own way because I still believed in God. Um, but right after I graduated from college, after those four years, I went to law school and I was really, really depressed. And um, it was during this time that I kind of sought God out again, you know, like talk to him again because I hadn't done that for a while and trying to get to the bottom of why I felt so depressed. Like I had never felt that depressed in my life. I started feeling like suicidal where I just didn't feel like I wanted to exist. So I, I didn't have any like premeditated thoughts to like kill myself or anything, but I definitely did not want to exist. And I struggled with my studies. I, I didn't even want to be a lawyer. So I think um, after I realized that I kind of had this existential crisis where I was just like, okay, what do I do with my life now? Um, and it was after realizing all these things that I had a conversation with God and I told him that if I can get to the bottom of this, of this depression, right? I kind of like made a vow slash bargain with God. It's like, God, I want to get to the bottom of this depression because I truly believe that God cared about me and he, he loves me and he loves everyone else. And I was just like, why would you want me to suffer through depression? What is the source of this depression? Because it was like, I didn't know why I was so depressed. It just like came into me in my life in all these random times in my life. And it was like something I could not control. And I was just like, God, I know there's a reason behind this. I know that this is, there's something about this that's not me. You know, cause I, I'm a very optimistic, cheerful person. And so it was very hard for me to accept like my melancholy nature and um, these things would happen to me. And so I made a vow to God and I said, I'm gonna quit law school and I'm going to figure out why I'm depressed. And if I can figure it out, God, and if you can show me and guide me to that, then I will, I will tell everyone. So that was my vow to God. 
before I knew that you couldn't, you shouldn't make vows before, you know, the living God that, which is, which is in the Bible, but so, so after law school, I decided that I went, when I dropped out of law school, I decided that I, um, would seek every religion until I could find which is the living God, which is the God that I was speaking to, which was the, which God was it that was listening to me? And if that existed or, or maybe all religions of mankind were wrong, you know, and I just wanted to find out the truth for the first time. I was willing to seek God until I could figure out the truth because for me, the truth mattered more than my career, which I didn't even know what I was going to do anyways. And I thought, you know, God, I have a purpose to live on this earth. You know, I may have thoughts that I don't want to exist, but I know that it's something that's outside of me that wants to hinder my my purpose. And I, I just felt that that calling in my heart so greatly um, that it led me to all this research and, and actually, um, you, you know, all these things that pretty much led me to the occult and, and led me to search and read um, on all these different religions. So... When I came back, um, and when I came back, this was like, let's say, uh, this is about like four years ago, um, when I came back and I basically was researching and exploring. So I did like marijuana with my friends cause I thought, oh, how cool experience something different. And I started dating, I started doing all these different things and I met this one guy on OkCupid and um, I basically thought he, he was my soulmate and I don't even know what drove me to that idea but I've had some kind of crazy out of body experiences, crazy spiritual experiences um, regarding love um, which I will go deeper in maybe some other time but I basically thought this guy was my soulmate and even though our relationship was toxic so it seemed like we triggered each other very often, but I felt like called to forgive him. I felt called to like love him, even though I felt emotionally abused. And I'm pretty sure I emotionally abused him too. And we abused each other in ways that we didn't understand. Um, but I was so obsessed with him. I was so obsessed with figuring out what the problem was. Cause it was like, sometimes I felt like I had been with him for so long. Like my spirit was with him for so long. I learned so many things with him and I, I loved being with him, but it was like so toxic at the same time. And um, because I was trying to figure figure all this out, I um, did a lot of research about soulmates and that kind of led me into the new age movement because soulmate is a really big area in the new age movement, especially if you, you've met someone and you are experiencing all the signs of a soulmate, you guys may know exactly what I mean. The new age movement pretty much covers exactly why you're going through it, right? And it talks about spiritual enlightenment. It talks about how you guys aren't on the same spiritual level, but you need to learn forgiveness. And so it seems like really good things, but at the same time I was told or the new age movement promoted that I like stay in this relationship with this, this guy who, you know, we weren't, we weren't that great for each other, but I couldn't let go. And, um, all of that even led to fortune telling and divination because I was so obsessed with him. He was my idol. So I wanted to find out what he thought of me. And sooner or later I was like doing tarot cards for my friends. And I didn't even need tarot cards at one point. I got so good at like figuring out the future. Like people would just be like, how do you know that? Right. So I, that was a time in my life where I realized that I was very deep into the new age movement and I, and I thought that these spiritual things like fortune telling divination, all of that were, were real things. Um, and you know, there's a lot of the world which thinks that spirits and all of that is, is, is not like real, but I truly started believing this because of all the spiritual encounters that I was experiencing. Um, so about this started happening about like, I'd say actually like four or five or six months in, um, that I met this guy and started doing fortune telling and I started meeting people who would do the same thing as me, who kind of validated even my encounters and that what was happening to me was real. Um, six months in, I came onto this website uh, about the Galactic Federation, which I believe is like a Star Trek call or something like that. Um, but 
it's a very popular concept in the New Age movement about aliens and how certain human spirits, um, they, their past lives, right? Because po karma, past lives, and reincarnation is a really popular concept in the New Age movement. And that's something that even Buddhists believe. So I was like, okay, I can believe that. Um, so I went on this website, which said that if you take this test, you can figure out like what galaxy you're from. Um, and maybe you have like a mission on earth. So I'm thinking, this is great. I've been looking for my mission and my purpose because I want to exist, right? Um, so I went on this page and I did the test cause I was just like, oh, this is just fun or I'll just try it. And after the test happened, actually, I started to have a lot of visions and um, hallucinations and they were enhanced when I was smoking marijuana. I started seeing aliens and archangels and all these different things. Like my life changed. So six months in, I was after I was researching all these things, a new age movement, my life changed. Um, and I started going to like conferences and I started learning all these different things about the new age movement. You name it, I've probably done it. The only thing I haven't done is astral travel, but I've you know, I bought crystals, I started getting into astrology, I started learning about numbers, I started learning about like the mantras and the visualizations and the, you know, the ones with all the designs. I forgot what that, you know, visualizations, um, uh, you know, that sort of thing. So I, I kind of really researched into a lot of different areas of the New Age movement. And, um, around these six months when I was, you know, getting even more deep into it and I would see all these visions and all these things, um, I started doubting about the new age movement about like six months in or like almost like eight to nine months in or a year in because all these people I started seeing like psychics and um, astrologers and different people I've met, some of them didn't bear fruit. Like some of them just their character didn't line up to like their actions because the new age movement teaches that God is love. And so everything is positive. You know, there is a balance of yin and yang. There's a balance of good and evil. That's all like occultic ideas that have been, you know, taught in the new age movement. Um, and for anyone who doesn't know, um, my definition of the new age movement is it's a disguise of the occult. It's like a movement that disguises um, the fact that they're actually celebrating the occult and they take different religions like Eastern religions, like Buddhism, Hinduism, and they pair it up with Western religions like Mormonism, Scientology, and all these cults are a part of um, the occult. And so I basically start practicing Buddhism, Hinduism, you name it. I practiced weird things and I researched into weird things and I read some occultic books um, I was really into knowledge. I was really just learning everything that I possibly could in the occult and in the new age movement. But yes, at a certain time, I started doubting because there's this term thrown around in the new age movement called the source. And the source is considered like energy. So like we, the source is like a force, like the force in, in um, Star Wars, I believe that's exactly what they are um, referring to because the force is kind of like the source where God is a force and it's, it's energy that is, can be reflected either positively or negatively depending on your intention. Um, and it's, the source is considered like an energy rather than a being. So God isn't really a being, but it's like a force. It's like energy and, um, but the source is the highest energy of the universe. So it's all the energy or molecules that make up us, like human beings, animals, everything that's been created. Creation is made up of the source and creation comes from the source. So that is, those are the ideas that new age movement promotes about the source. Um, furthermore, uh, mediums would channel the source and those that could do that were considered the best mediums because they could channel from the highest energy of the universe. So their information was considered quote, quote, more accurate. Um, so hearing about the source, I was really wondering if, is this source good or evil, right? Because depending on the intention of this source, right, 
which supposedly was considered love, all unconditional love, right? But depending on who is actually the source or who is promoting this source, this entire movement that I call it the New Age movement could really just be inherently evil. And especially the leaders of the cult in the New Age movement, they just, you know, like they just did things that um, didn't make me think that they were supporting the idea that the source is love. If their character just suddenly got super angry all of a sudden, or, you know, I'm at one of these New Age conferences and the leaders have like their breasts like hanging out from their shirt, things like that. And anyways, that's a different topic. Um, so I remember I, for a couple months I thought, okay, or a month or so, I'm not gonna go see psychics anymore. I'm gonna remove myself from the situation until I can figure out who the source is, right? Um, and I had like just joined this cult like a month ago or so, two months ago, and it's called the Suikyo Maikari. And they have this like pendant where they use the source energy and if you put this pendant on, you'd be able to heal other people with your source energy pendant. And this energy, because it was the highest energy of the universe, um, manifested into many healings, right? And many miracles for this cult. And so I was part of this cult and um, I decided to not basically remove myself from this pendant for a while, just so I could figure out who the source is. And I remember after like two weeks or so, it was just like a random night. I just touched the pendant by accident or for some reason touched it. And I immediately started realizing, like my soul kind of, I don't even know how to explain it, you guys. But I just knew that that energy was Lucifer. And there are a lot of things, I think I had started learning about who Lucifer was because the occult, the highest leaders of the occult will talk about Lucifer. So, you know, the initiates on the bottom of the ladder of the cult or secret societies, they don't know who they're serving. But you go to the, you know, the Freemasonries of the 32nd degrees or whatever, the highest members of those secret societies know they're serving Lucifer. So I started learning about Lucifer around this time. And when I touched the pendant, I just thought, this energy is Lucifer. Like Lucifer is the source. He is trying to pretend to be this quote, quote, God, this energy of unconditional love. And, and the healing that comes from that pendant is false light. It's, it's Lucifer masquerading as light. So he is actually false light. And he's doing many healings and many miracles through these this sort of thing. And the, this cult, Tsuki Mahikari, is only one of the various ways that Lucifer has tried to really manifest in you know many areas of our life. And I basically had a conversation with Lucifer um, that he could not do this, that he, he was spraying false light and he couldn't do this. Obviously, I was, I don't even know how, why I had that conversation with him. But after that conversation, I was like, okay, so this new age movement probably isn't true, right? So I'm thinking like already, okay, the occult is bad. What is the occult? So at that time, I didn't know what the occult was. I only knew what the new age movement is because they are the same, but they are disguised differently. Um, and you can think of the new age movement as like a hodgepodge of all the things in the occult. It's just like, you put together what you believe in. It's great for people who believe in moral relativism, right? You can just believe in anything you want. And that's pretty much the new age movement. Like, um, so I think about very shortly after, like a couple weeks in, um, I was at this like Oakland art walk and I met a psychic there. She just started talking to me, even though I didn't really want to talk to her. And she told me that the reason why I was so depressed was because I had entities around me. And when she said that, I, I thought there was so much truth to her statement that I could not help but figure it out. And I was just like, yes, that's exactly it. Like it's been there my whole life and I just couldn't figure out why it's been there my whole life. And I was just like, okay. And I was totally down to like see her then. And we did this ritual to remove these entities from me. So like um, she required some things, forgot like photos and things like that. It was pretty much like a voodoo ritual, but I didn't know that at that time. Um, and she asked me for money. And so I gave it to her. 
because I was desperate, you guys. So like this whole time being in the cult, although I was like doing all this work, like researching all these things, I felt no peace. I felt so empty. I felt like I was always trying to be perfect. And I felt, I felt more suicidal than ever actually. So I would hear thoughts in my head, voices telling me to kill myself. It just got really bad. So when she just like offered this truth to me on a platter, I was just like, yes, I will take this, right? So the first ritual though didn't work. Um, so I asked her to do it again, which is probably what I shouldn't have done. But I asked her to do it again and we did a bigger ritual, more money, more things she wanted from me, more voodoo stuff. I don't even remember if she asked me for like hair, but it's very possible that I gave her some of my hair. Like, anyways, I was very ignorant of how the cult was. Um, and that's kind of why I fell into all this danger. Anyway, so I, she asked me permission to for someone else's help who has more quote quote spiritual power than her and can get rid of these demons or entities. That's what they called them, guys. That's what the New Age Movement calls all of these things, entities, right? So entities like in the New Age Movement are just like fragments of souls of like human spirits that used to live, that just like float around the universe and attach to you or things that are around you that harass, I don't know, harass you for some reason things like that. So the new age movement does not call them demons and does not call them, um, necessarily does not call them spirits. Um, so I did this ritual and turns out right after the ritual, I felt like I wanted to rape little kids. And that was the moment when I realized that demons were real because demons, you know, are spirits that come into you that um, are not you, right? But provoke you to do evil things and to think upon evil thoughts. And I started realizing at that moment that um, I could want to rape little kids. I could have thoughts of raping little kids, but I knew that wasn't me. So it had to be something that was outside of me, that was put into me. And I believe that um, that psychic had put it into me, put these, she put three demons into me. And one of them was a pedophile. It was a, a spirit of pedophilia. Um, and he could have possibly, I believe he was, up, there were, these demons were other things as well. But that was one of the characteristics of this demon. And that's why I wanted to rape little kids so badly. And so these three demons, in my opinion, um, and from what I understand, were very high ranking demons that were put into me. They were so high ranking that I felt exhausted for in the next two weeks I thought I was going to die I felt like I was being drained I, I felt like sometimes I would feel things in the spiritual realm like like witches and some other things were think people were attacking me and I didn't understand why I felt all these forces in the spiritual realm um, and I truly feared for my life guys because when you feel like a zombie where you have absolutely no energy and you feel like you want to rape little kids at the same time that is a very scary combination and it was that moment where I thought to myself, okay, I should probably look for exorcists now. I should probably like figure this out, right? And I remember in the Bible that Jesus cast out demons. So, um, and my friends, my Christian friends are telling me that you don't need exorcists. You just need to believe in Jesus because that's how he'll truly come out. And I was just like, you know what? They're right. I need to just believe in Jesus. This concept that I have never understood ever since I went to Christian church. So I'm sitting there because I'm so afraid of the Bible and I'm so skeptical of the Bible. I'm just like actually looking up who Jesus is and all these occultic means. So like I will like watch the matrix for those who don't believe the matrix is a cult. That's another story, but you know, I watch the matrix. I do, I basically just like research about Jesus and all these other ways, you know, like who was Jesus as an ascended master? All, I never really, looked for Jesus in the in the biblical in a biblical way but um God is so good and even though I look through things in the occult fashion I could still somehow understand who Jesus was okay Jesus is about forgiveness the theme of this person is forgiveness I can understand that right so um this it's been around like two weeks now 
and I'm sitting on my bed one day or laying on my bed one day because I'm so tired and from my third eye which is something that you open when you meditate and when you practice the occult usually through meditation that is how the third eye opens and so through the third eye I was able to see all these things from the spiritual realm and I could see that there was like this like old hag that was coming after me. And in that moment, I felt really scared and I really felt like she was out to kill me, that she was casting some spell on me that I didn't understand. And I actually thought that that woman was the same woman that the psychic had paired up with. Like she had asked me for permission for this woman to actually put the demon in me. Um, and I was asking God, God, who is this woman, right? Like, yes, she might be that person that um, the psychic, you know, paired up with, but who is she really? What is she here to do? And I heard or felt God tell me that she is a necromancer. And a necromancer is who Lord Voldemort is in Harry Potter. So someone who raises the dead, communicates with the dead, and practices the darkest of the dark arts. The darkest of the dark arts, guys. And that's why I was so scared. I was like, so scared for my life. Like, I thought she was really out to kill me because I felt the the evil off of her and I had this conversation with God where I was like, okay, God, I'm about to die. Or I really think I'm about to die. What can I do now? I only have a couple seconds and she's going to come kill me, you know, or she's going to whatever, do something terrible. And I still don't truly believe in Jesus. Like I know he's about forgiveness, but that's it. And um, I'm having this conversation with God and my life is flashing actually before my eyes. And I'm thinking about all the things I've done in my life. And I'm thinking about whether it, um, whether it's okay that, that I die, whether it's fair. And I'm like, oh, you know, life isn't, it's, this is not fair. I was betrayed. That was the first time I realized, like, I've been betrayed, God. But I'm betrayed by the occult, by the New Age movement. Because I've been seeking you all along. Ever since I dropped out of law school, all I wanted to do was find you. That was my heart behind it. But somehow I got into all this, these traps, Satan's traps, like this guy I fell in love with that I couldn't control. And it led me down all this, this road that I couldn't control. And I was asking God, why did this happen? Why did you do this to me? How could you do this to me? I remember God telling me, like asking me, do you want to live Cynthia? And I was like, you know, that's a very interesting question because I felt like I was just like throwing my life away. That's probably how I fell into all this danger. But I was just like, yeah, God, I want to live. You know, I have all these suicidal thoughts. And now I know that depression is from all these like demonic oppression. And like, you know, and I just, I was just like, I know now I want to keep my vow to you. I know the, the true nature of the spiritual realm now. I know what's going on in the cult. I know what's going on in the new age movement. And I was like, God, let me live. Let me live for you so I can tell everyone. Um, and God was like, and I don't know, God asked me a really interesting question. He said, can you forgive? Can you forgive the woman who um, put these demons in you? And I was like, yes, yes, I can forgive. Can you forgive everyone in your life? Yes, I can forgive. And I just thought to myself, why would I say that? And I just realized like, well, because Jesus forgave. Because Jesus was betrayed. And Jesus was abused. And Jesus was persecuted. And I was just thinking to myself, wait. Like, I just lived a glimpse of what Jesus lived. And um, I realized that day that how hard it is to forgive because Jesus said before he died on the cross, forgive them for they don't know. I mean, he had such a heart for people. He said, forgive them for they don't know. And that hit me. And I just started thinking about my whole life and all those people that I didn't forgive, all those people who abused me, who didn't understand why they were doing it who didn't understand that they were demonically oppressed and possessed. And that's why they hurt me. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and rulers of darkness. And I was just like, this is the truth, that Jesus is real. Jesus is the son of God because as a human being, you can't forgive. You can't forgive because you can't really see what's going on in the spiritual realm. But when God opened my eyes, made me realize that we are not enemies of each other, right? But Satan is in us. Satan is around us, tempting us and, you know, provoking us to hate each other. And that's why Jesus says, forgive them for they don't know. Because 
some people around are just walking ignorantly of the devil. They don't know what Satan's doing at all. And they don't, some of them don't want to hurt you, but they just do. So I thought, oh my gosh, like, Jesus has to be of a godly nature because it's impossible for a human being to understand these things, to understand and also forgive the way Jesus forgave. I mean, his whole like country, his people were against him, right? A prophet has no honor in his country or his home. He was abused, he was nailed on the cross, like the nail went through his hands, like through the middle, right? And through his feet. And he said nothing. And he was able, after all of that suffering, he was able to say, Father, forgive them for they don't know. He was our mediator after we abused him. Can you just imagine that? And I just thought to myself, why would someone martyr themselves like that? Like, even after they've been abused, right? And it's because only someone who is God is can do that. It's impossible for a human being to have that kind of heart and have that kind of understanding of human nature. So when I realized that like, wow, like this is the heart of Jesus. Like if I know that the heart of Jesus is real and the reason why he did that was because he died for our sins. Like I finally understood that like he did that to show us how much he loves us because only God could do that for us. That is unconditional love. The greatest demonstration of unconditional love was Jesus dying for us on the cross. And I thought to myself, like, this is it. I have been working to, to, to research all these things about the occult. When the truth is that I didn't have to work at all. All I had to do was see the love that Jesus demonstrated on the cross. It's as simple as that. I knew nothing about Jesus except that and I was just like willing to be like this is this is the true and living God for no one can come to me come to me come to the father except through me that's what Jesus meant because when you understand that Jesus died for your sins and you understand that he is the son of God and he demonstrated unconditional love for you on the cross that's how you know who the true and the living God is because going through Jesus because Jesus is the Christ, right? And he is the son of our Holy Father. That's how we know who our Holy Father is amidst all these different religions and all these different things. So when I realized all these things and it happened really quickly, I don't know, I, I don't even understand how all this information can happen supernaturally within like three seconds, which is like when the witch started coming at me, I was already thinking about all these things and it was like really fast in my head. Um, at the same time, I saw Jesus coming at me and in a vision. And I truly believe that it was not of my own accord. But I believe I was given a supernatural revelation of Jesus because there's just no way I could understand. I felt like there was no way I could understand my life in the gospel of Jesus in like three seconds. But I somehow did. And the whole time this was happening, I was seeing Jesus in, this, in, in a vision. And he, um, he put my demons into coffins, the three demons that the witch put in me. And he walked away on this like golden road. It was like so yellow it was in, in, in my vision. And then he told me that my debts were paid. And when that happened, I, I mean, I have been seeing satanic visions for a really long time. So I actually wasn't sure that was Jesus. I was just like, okay, who's this person, right? But, and I didn't know what death, my debts were paid even meant. Like, that's not really human language. Like, you not really tell someone your, their debts are paid, right? Um, we rarely use the word debts now. So I was like, okay. Um, and only later did I realize that that's in the Lord's Prayer, right? Forgive us um, for our trespasses and, you know, for our debtors, right? Um, and that is something that Jesus would say. And that is exactly that, and I knew that Jesus had visited me. Um, and um, after that vision subsided, I, I um, felt this supernatural joy and peace in my, in my body, in my heart. Something that I had just never felt before. I don't know how to explain it. It was so supernatural. It, it was not even like a human emotion. It was something that was like divine. 
and I didn't even know that the Holy Spirit was put in put into me at that time and that's what my body was feeling I just knew that God had shut doors in my life because within the same week all these psychics and witches and warlocks and people I had known in the cult tried calling me back. They called me back. They said they wanted to give me a gift. They wanted to meet up with me. All these different things. And I said no. Right. And I realized that I had more energy than I'd ever had in like my life. I was like so this this all this burden that was like relieved off of me. It was it's such a special time in my life. So that is my testimony of how Jesus saved me of the cult and the New Age movement. And definitely it took me a lot of time to walk out of the New Age movement and the cult and to renounce my allegiance and some of the mindset that I had. Um, and for that, I will leave that for a, a different video because it would take forever to explain. Uh, I'm also writing a memoir on my experiences and my entire testimony um, and that will be coming out maybe in a couple years or however long that I feel called that God wants me to finish writing this book so please I will you know let you guys know but please um, just stay tuned and if you want to watch my testimony in full please watch that as well and look forward to um, some more story times with me Thank you, you guys, for watching. Uh, I just pray that um, if you are walking out of the call right now, I just pray that um, God is with you. And I just pray that you trust him. And um, Something that is amazing about my testimony is that I believe that if I sought God with all my heart, I would find him. And it's true. So all roads don't lead to Rome, but all roads lead to Jesus. And that is my opinion that God maybe will let you go through things as you seek him. And I had Satan deceive me and entrap me because he did not want me to find the truth. And um, I, you know, had people tell me like that I was wicked and that's why I fell into the cult. And I was, but I also sought God with all my heart. So I just want to empower you guys. If you guys are trying to seek the true and living God, um, that you will find him if you seek him with all his heart because that is what the Bible promises. So I hope you guys have a blessed time. Um, and I pray that God will be with you guys. Bye.